Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. You guys will be happy to know that I finally recorded the Ultra Jazz Master episode today. The rough edit's done, so we'll definitely see this one tomorrow, but unfortunately, there's some things I did not like about this guitar. And speaking of things that I do not like about guitars, this thing showed up on Reverb today. Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul 58 Historic Reissue PSL 2018 Factory Burst. Just say no to this spec. Can you tell what spec I'm talking about? It's black binding. This 58 reissue looks like a Les Paul Studio because of the black binding. Black binding sounds really cool in theory. It's like gold fret wire. In your head, you're like, yeah. But in person, it's like, oh, rusty looking frets. Thanks. <laughs> So black binding, the problem I have with this is it just disappears. And that's why this high-end Les Paul now looks like a Les Paul Studio that just happens to be a premium plus top. But that doesn't mean black binding is bad on all guitars. I think it looks really cool on things like the blackout Les Paul custom because the black can stand out against the blue a little bit better. And ending on black binding while still having multiply binding can sometimes look really cool like on the Moonless Night Les Paul custom. But on this one, I just don't think it's doing it any justice. Do you? Because this guitar would normally look like this. The binding doesn't stand out a bunch because it's only single ply, but it complements that middle color much better. And you're also gonna notice, huh, the plastics are different on this other one too. And that's kind of another thing that I feel makes this thing look like a Les Paul Studio, because many Les Paul Studios will have black plastics on them. The only high-end Gibsons that you're used to seeing with black plastics are customs, and the pick guard just doesn't work for that. And you're also going to notice that the binding along the neck is colored black as well. If the Gibson Project team came to me and asked me to market this guitar in an effective way that uses historical accuracy, here's the story I would make up. This is based off of a 1957 Les Paul Gold Top that was once refinished into this cherry sunburst color. It was also one of the rare ones that had black plastics. And during the refinish job, somebody decided to put black binding on it to match the plastics. All right, guys, put your pre-orders in now. <laughs> All right, I feel I've ragged enough on this guitar. But something that does kind of work with the black plastics is the face of the headstock, because that's black, so it kind of just naturally matches in a way. So I could see how somebody would dig this. It's just so jarring at first. You got to put a couple of jabs in at it. This is probably one of those guitars that you have to see in person to truly appreciate it as well. But my favorite thing about this guitar, the front looks like the Les Paul Studio, as we've already discussed. But once you get to the headstock, that's when you know you're dealing with a reissue. And then you get to the back. Whoa! Yeah, we're definitely not dealing with a studio here. That is some very nice looking mahogany. It's got that great stain. This looks like a historic Les Paul all of a sudden again. Same thing going on with the neck and the serial number, the tuners, just everything about this is gorgeous. And believe it or not, this one is from 2018 and comes in one of their more correct lift and reissue cases. So spec-wise here, it's a pretty basic reissue guitar. You're going to have a long neck tenon with the ABR1 bridge lightweight tailpiece. He doesn't say what type of pickups are in here. We've got the thumb bleeders on the knobs. Vintage style truss rod cover that sleeps slightly higher on the headstock, as well as the vintage looking logo and a sweet one-piece mahogany back, as well as the neck. So how much does this strange 1958 Les Paul reissue cost? Surprisingly, $4,374.57. That's because it's offered by Guitar Imp and they are located in the United Kingdom. So when you translate that price, you get a goofy price like that. Is it supremely overpriced for a limited edition 58 reissue? Eh, not really. Maybe a little bit more than I would want to pay, but I'm sure somebody will pay them 38 or so. I'm having a hard time finding if it was like a very small limited run for a dealer or if Gibson just did a small run of these or was it a custom order? Looks like the Slash Brazilian Dream also had the black plastics, but that one actually looks good for some reason. It must just be the single ply pick guard with that black binding that makes those things not look good. I looked and looked and couldn't find anything similar to this guitar. <laughs>
The only question left, would you rock the Black Bound 58 reissue Les Paul or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.